lay out what's going to happen today. So basically, um, I'm going to tell a little bit about the project and um, share my story with you, my story behind my photo. And we have a couple of uh, guest speakers here tonight. Two of the models are here in the um, station and the regionals. And we also have a representative from the Women's Freedom Center who will be um, talking about and her reactions to the project and pretty much whatever she wants to talk about. <laughs> it's fine with me. Um, and then we'll have some question and answer time. And that'll pretty much be it. So, um, perfect imperfection. What is perfect imperfection? Well, to me, it's about finding the beauty that's in the imperfection. Imperfection is something that everyone strives for, and you just can't get there. There is no getting there. Um, everyone really has something unique to offer, and you know, if you don't share your unique gift, the world will really be missing out. So, this project has been an amazing ride for me, as well as the models, you know, as well as people that have been coming to see it. And it really is a chance to embrace what your per perceived imperfection is. So many people don't feel like they're good enough or lovable enough. And they're always trying to measure up. Maybe if I maybe if I do this or I buy this product or I buy that product, I'll be good enough. People will like me. You know. But the thing is, these are messages that we've gotten through the media and maybe through our family of origin that really weigh us down. You know, and these are messages that we need to actually take a look at and change them for ourselves. So that's what perfect imperfection is about. It's really about being honest with yourself, taking a look at what is really holding me back in life? What is it about me that I am not accepting? Take a look at it and work with it and embrace it. Um, for me, my photo, well, it's all the way down there. Uh, for me, that I'm not going to read the quote that I actually put under the photograph because I can't remember it. <laughs> um, so here's the, here's the quote that goes along with it, which, by the way, not easy for me. Let me, let me also go back a little bit more and say, when Shanta and I did this, started thinking about this project and doing this project together, we said, we have to photograph each other because how can we ask people to be vulnerable when we're not being vulnerable with ourselves, you know? So that's what we did one day we set out and we took a bunch of photos of each other and it was hard and it was good and it was a lot of, a lot of things. And we said, wow, this is going to be some project. Um, so that that's kind of that's kind of uh, what we did there. So here here's my here's my uh, quote that goes with my photo. Basically, it's if you haven't seen it, it's me standing in the doorway. I think it's like this, opening the door, kind of half in and half out. And that's pretty much what was interesting was when we started doing doing this, and I had that idea of because we collaborated on what was my picture going to look like. Mm -hmm. yeah. Two photographers, like, in the room, it's hard to figure out what you're going to do, you know? So, so I'm like, okay, what, what are we going to do? I had different ideas, you know? My photo was about rape. So I'm thinking, okay, I have all these ideas. How are we going to show this? How do you show rape and not, like, scare people away? Like, how do you do this, you know? So my thing is, I really, I really had that idea, and I, I took a look at it, and I said, okay, well, what do I do? Like, what, what is it? How has this really influenced me? So I'm thinking, okay, I'm, I'm like half in and half out a lot of times. I'm not really trusting a lot of times. I don't want to let people in a lot of times. So I'm like, I'm going to be in the doorway. And it's dark back there in that doorway. And I'm kind of showing you who I am, but I'm kind of not, you know? Um, you know, the rape is, it was a long time ago. And in some kind of weird time travel way, it's not a long time ago, so it's kind of strange. Um, I realize that it has influenced pretty much everything in my life, including creating this project. 
So here's, here's my quote, which I promised and I didn't deliver on. So it's called The Protector. There's a part of myself I call The Protector. The Protector is vigilant and keeps me safe, but also distant. I'm a survivor of rape. I realize now that active violence has unconsciously shaped everything in my life, bittersweet. And it is. It was a bad thing, a really bad thing. But out of it, I was able to kind of create some good and kind of put it forward in front of people. And so I feel, I feel really good about that. So that's my story. Um, so enough about me. I don't know how we're doing on time, but let's let's start with Jen. I'd like to have Jen come up, and I will. You can either sit or stand, whatever you like. She's going to tell us her story. Hi. 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 I'm Jen. Um, I am down there, with a big tattoo on the arm, um, and. Boy, I could fill up an hour, but I'm not. <laughs> so let me start by saying, when Liz approached me about this project, I was super excited. And I knew I wanted to participate, and I had no idea how, because I had a list of what I perceived to be my perfect imperfections. Long. And I was like, OK, I'm going to have to prioritize it. And so I did. And what drew me the most was body image. And not so much body image, but the shame of my body. And that has always held me back. Um, I was raised by two parents a little bit separately for a while. And I had a father who was pretty abusive about weight, like putting a camera on you to make sure you're doing exercises. Like, he has no body fat. So, like, did you, did you clock your miles in? Did you clock your miles in? And then I had a mother, who's right there, who was the most supportive and the most wonderful influence who never saw my weight. And in a good way and a bad way. Like, just always thought, you're beautiful. And still, with the negative influences that were in my life, I always wanted to, I, I would always say, I've got to do it. I'm going to do it before I'm 20. I'm going to do it before I'm 25. Gotta lose the weight. And it never happened. And I'll tell you why it never happened. Until now. It never happened because I never said, I'm going to do it for me. I was doing it so my father would finally be really impressed and take me to a dinner with his friends and be like, and this is my daughter. And doing it for the cute girl and doing it, you know. So. I didn't realize it was even in me. And when I would go on these crazy diets, they would ultimately fail because it wasn't for the right reasons. And so this year, I actually have mostly done it. I've lost 75 pounds, which is a huge accomplishment. Um, but I didn't do it this time for anybody. I did it for myself and not to be a supermodel and not to wear a bikini because it's a man who's in the house and after having two kids. But I did it for me and to be a better mom and to keep up with my kids and to be a better person. And that to me is the most important thing is to do things for you because you're the only one you got, you know, at the end of the day. And this project speaks volumes to me. And the photo shoot in general, again, I can just Really. I was really nervous about it. I'm in a corset and a bra and I was like mortified and nervous and I had, you know, I hadn't really started this whole long journey. I was kind of in the middle of it and I was very self-conscious and Liz, though I'm sure I don't need to vouch for her because she's amazing, made me feel like a princess. Like as soon as the first picture had been taken, I was into it. I was ready to go. And it was really, really exciting. Um, if you've seen that photo, I'm standing in front of some words. Some are blurry. You can see the word strong in the back. We actually did two different things. I stood, she had me make two backdrops, one with all the disparaging, horrible things I had heard from people and thought myself, and one with all the empowering things. And we chose that one. 
um, but it was an incredibly emotional experience. It was amazing how you felt different posing in front of each backdrop. And that's what I want to do as a person and a mom. My five-year-old came home from kindergarten last week and said, I told the boy in my class that I will be pretty for him every day of kindergarten so he likes me. And I was like, oh, no, 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 no. And I want to just send the message out that we need to empower people, kids and grown-ups, to be really proud of who they are and not care if it's society's definition of perfect. Because none of us are, and even the ones that are perceived that way are not. Um, this project has really, <laughs> it's really aided in bringing my confidence to an entirely new level. This is not something I would have done a year ago today, at all. And Liz has a big hand in that, and I'm really, really grateful for that. And I really applaud every single person that got up and did this because it is hard to be vulnerable and hard to face what people have said or what people have perceived about you and fight back and say, yeah, no. <laughs> so thank you, and thank you. Yeah, that was an amazing photo shoot with her. Um, we were channeling her inner Dina Von Tees. Yeah, it was <laughs> awesome. It was awesome. Um, Stacia, did you want to come up? Great. Let's go with Stacia. Hi, I'm Stacia, and I am also here to talk about body image. Um, it's funny that those are both of our things. So, when Liz approached me about the project in the spring and was talking about it, it was like, no brainer. I was like, the one, I knew exactly what I was going to talk about, it was body image, because it's been my issue since I was a kid. Um, and it's different than yours, and I think that's, you know, it's interesting, because for me, when I was younger, I was always picked on because I was skinny. I was skinny, skinny, skinny. I weighed 100, barely broke 100 pounds. I was an athlete, I was a runner, but people would pick on me and say some of the most horrible, mean things, but nobody addressed it because they were picking on a skinny girl, right? And so there's no social stigma, there's not, you know what I mean? It was just, you could make fun of me in front of the teacher and nobody would say anything because it's a skinny comment, those aren't bad. And it always, for years, it was like, you know, what? why is it okay to make fun of the skinny girl but not to make fun of the fat girl, right? And it always was a, a funny thing for me. And, and then, so I was this skinny girl, made fun of, oh, I bumped into Stacia, I got a paper cut. I mean, that was always sort of like a joke for me. And my nickname was Stick. And it's like, that doesn't always elicit a lot of sympathy because being skinny is associated with something good. You know what I mean? Like the supermodels are skinny. You have a long neck like an ostrich. Well, the supermodels have long neck. You would have never, it always just hurt my feelings. But then as I got older, so then I went into my 20s and my 30s, and then I started to gain weight, and I gained it all in my hips and my ass, like all of my weight, just sort of this is where my weight gain was, and it was fat. It wasn't like smooth, it was like cellulite, right? So then I had, and then I was skinny fat, so then I had this like weird like you can count my ribs and my clavicles are like bird feeders, that used to be like a joke when I was little. Um, but then I was like skinny and then I would have sailing. and people would say to me and this was okay, oh my god for a skinny girl you're sure fat, like, you know, or I'd come in a bathing suit and people would be like, the cellulite, it's amazing, you can be so skinny and so fat at the same time. And it was, it's been a sort of a journey for me of having this, you know, hair shaped body. So I'm thin, thin, thin and then, you know, I'm like 29, 30, 29, 39, like that's, this is my shape, and it's always been something I've been very self-conscious of. Um, and it took me, you know, and then Liz approached me about the project, and I was like, yeah, it's totally body image for me. I've always been very self-conscious of my shape and wearing long things, and, um, and I also didn't know how to dress my shape, you know, it was not knowing how to dress my body, and I'd wear little shirts and big pants, and it was just, it didn't work for me. Um, and so over... So it's all like, it's all shit. So for years, for like 38 years, it was my imperfection. And then in the last year and a half, it switched to be my perfect imperfection. One, because I learned how to get dressed. Mm -hmm. um, I learned how to create balance and proportion and those 
little things that have made a huge difference to be like, now I know how to, and, and feel good in what I'm wearing, where before I would just, I felt bad, and so I would dress bad, and so it's sort of creating that whole, you know, transformation in my mind and in my body and how I present myself made a difference for me. Um, and then I had a baby, well, I had a baby, you know, seven, eight years ago, and it was fine, but then I had another baby a year and a half ago, and he was big, and he was, and I had a natural childbirth with him, he was 10 pounds, 11 ounces, which is kind of big for this small <laughs> space. Um, and I remember going through childbirth, and like the next day, and the midwife was like, that's the biggest baby I've ever delivered, this was amazing, and, and I was like, I'm wearing a bikini, because these hips, these hips that I've been ashamed of for my entire life just gave birth to this giant three-month-old, right? And I did it. Like, my power, my strength, my courage, my gumption, my hips did this. And then I was like, you know, wait, wait, wait. <laughs> so it was like, within, I mean, I was like in the hospital and I was like, give me a bikini! I'm gonna walk over <laughs> crazy and I had just had the giant baby so I was like oh, and, you know exhausted and but it was like a huge transformation for me to go from like feeling so ashamed of my body to being like this body is an amazing vessel I not only created life but I squeezed this monster out of my body and these hips were like supposed to be this way because I would have never been able to give birth to this baby the way I wanted to if I was anybody else, if I had any other different kind of body. And you know, when Liz approached me about the project, I did a lot of reading and like, what am I gonna talk about? How am I gonna frame this? What is this all gonna be for me? And, and I read an article about sort of skinny shame versus fat shame and it made so much sense to me that, you know, when I talked about the skinniness is it's something that it hurts your feelings, but then you get over it. Something like cellulite or being fat is a societal, like, horrible thing. And it, you don't just hear it and then it goes away. You hear it, then you turn on the TV, then you go in the line at the store, then you see cellulite, look who was caught at the beach with cellulite, shame, 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 get a cream, get this, do this. When somebody made fun of me because I was skinny, it would hurt and then it would go away. It wasn't a message that it hit me no matter where I turned. The cellulite has been that for me. And it's been this thing where like, everywhere I go, it's this terrible thing that it, it's like, like, that's how it's different. That's how the skinny shame is different than the fat shame. Um, and so it's, but it, it, it was nice for me to sort of put that piece into perspective, and that's why it was okay to be more okay to make fun of the skinny girl than it is the fat girl, because the fat girl thing, or the cellulite or the, the perceived societal bad, bad, bad things are way harder to get over, because they never leave you alone for a second. Um, and so I was so, feel so fortunate that I had this experience of how to, like, get dressed, and how to dress my shape, and how, and then having this whopper, um, to, to really switch it for me. So it hasn't been something I've transformed through like affirmations and it's been like my real life's experience and I have a child, you know, I have a daughter. She was born with special needs. Um, she looks different than other kids. She doesn't look the same. You know, she wears hearing aids. She has a four-fingered hand. Her face is different. She has craniofacial differences and body differences. And I'm talking about my can't go in public because I can't wear a bathing suit because I have fat thighs and she's walking around looking di What kind of message am I teaching my kid? And then it was like, it, like it had to change and she'll like put her face in my belly and go, <laughs> oh, like your belly is so jiggly and flopsy, it's so awesome. <laughs> but she just thinks it's amazing and she'll just be like, mama, look at your butt, it jiggles when I do that. <laughs> It's just turned into this funny thing, but she loves it. She thinks it's awesome, and I have to go, you're right. It is awesome. It jiggles and it shakes like that, and, and you're perfect too. You know, so it's really been this whole big thing of having a kid with special needs, having a big baby, learning how to, you know, use my body in the best way that I can. And it's all come together to be my perfect imperfection. And it's, 
you know, with the project, it's like it's all put it together for me in pieces where it was just an experience that I hadn't thought of. And then I wrote a blog post. I have a website. And I wrote a blog post on my perfect imperfection. And it took me like 30 hours to write a 700 word <laughs> article because it took a lot of time to really like make it into something cohesive. And what does this mean? Um, and the photo shoot was awesome. I was like a supermodel in the brow. It was so fantastic. People were like stopping taking pictures of her taking pictures of her because they thought I was famous or something. It was so great. <laughs> so in my picture, you know, I'm holding a pear because of my pear shape, so it's a body image thing. Um, and it was just, it was such a great thing. And now people are commenting on my website saying, Stacia, you've given me permission to think about what my perfect imperfection in here it is. So it's gone beyond me to my people that follow me on my website. So it's been interesting to sort of see how it's reflected. So it's been awesome. Thank you. Thank you. You know, I, I don't think I told her about the pair, right? I no. didn't know I was bringing a pair with me. Because we had talked about different things that we were going to do. And then, you know, the night before, I'm like, I'm going to just grab these pairs, this pair randomly. I'm talking about pear shape. Ah, that might be a silly idea. I don't know, you know? But uh, I had it in my bag. I didn't tell her about it. We were ready to do the shoot. And I'm like, Hey, you know, I brought this pair, and so I don't know what you're going to do with it, but just don't let the label show, you know. So, <laughs> so she, she just she grabbed it and she held it like the, you know, she, she held it like this, and she had this just sweet little dress with the, the trim has like little bicycles and birds on it. It's so fun, and and she's holding this pair, and to me, like the way she was holding it in this particular photo it was like this is something that is close to her you know that she's kind of you were holding it like a baby kind of you had mentioned that too and i just thought that was really amazing it was really um i don't know it just seemed like the photo to use for this particular one but that was a really great one so um so thank you Stacia, for sharing that story so Shanta cannot be here today for our presentation, but she's here in spirit. There she is. Yes. I have her statement that I'm going to read, but I'm going to hold it in front of my face because I want you to pretend that I'm Shanta reading too. So here's what she says. Now her her photo is the one with the mask, which is kind of like the almost like the unofficial logo of Perfect Imperfection. It's been all over town. Um, so what she is saying. Um, she, she's really talking about her process and things like that. I'll just read it to you. It's difficult to talk about why I wanted to embark upon this project without sharing the story, so here it goes. I got in trouble a lot growing up, and I was under pressure to get things right. I'll spare you the details. Good stuff's in the details, though. So maybe we can get it another time. Um, but I'll never forget being forced to spend hours in the kitchen, hours at the kitchen table trying to memorize the alphabet and the trouble I faced when I misidentified a letter on the flashcard. This set the precedent, and I immediately received the message that mistakes were not allowed, ever. I became a perfectionist and an overachiever for many reasons as a result of some of these experiences. It was also the beginning of my long road of walking a tightrope called perfection. The more exhausting the walk across this tightrope, the more I came to view perfectionism as a disease. As I observe society and throughout about my childhood, the more I easily recognize the pressure we place upon ourselves in many ways to maintain an unattainable, non-existent ideal. Beyond the photoshopping and the polishing of an image, we are constantly pressed, like paninis, <laughs> to lead ideal, perfect lives. I was intrigued with the concept of the imperfect due to my life experiences. As a writer and thinker, it is a concept that I embraced as I attempted to challenge my thinking about what it meant to be perfect. It was a blessing to connect with Liz <laughs> and discover someone else, a fellow artist, who was not only impassioned about this concept, but wanted to do something to create a change. Not only is this challenging the idea of being perfect a part of what I seek to do in this project, or what I like to think of as a movement with perfect imperfection, 
but it is also my personal work in regard to self-acceptance. So that was, wow, that was great. Um, her photo shoot, I can tell you a little bit about her photo. Um, so just like the pair was a surprise to Stacia, the mask was a surprise to me. <laughs> because we had not talked about using the mask um, in her photo shoot. Because actually, this we, we had talked about doing something like this. This was one of the other photos. She's standing by um, an abandoned building. Um, so we shot that idea, and then she's like, you know, I have this like cool coat and this and this mask, and I really like to kind of explore that too. And I'm like, okay, great, let's go with it, because that's how photo shoots are. Sometimes you have a little kernel of an idea, and then it changes, you know, and that's awesome. I love it when that happens. So um, in her photo, she has a mask on, and she's looking at another mask. And I love the tension that's kind of created between the two things. And um, I'm going to paraphrase because I don't remember her quote. Mm -hmm. But basically, she, she calls it mirror because um, she kind of reflects back what people want to see about themselves. And so perhaps the mask, this is my, my guess. I, she was probably going to kill me, but <laughs> perhaps the mask is to kind of help not not have that happen, you know. Not, I'm not sure, but I, th that's how I, that's how I, I, what I take from it. Um, again, this photo shoots were pretty amazing. Um, complete journey for us too, as as artists, and it really did make us both grow. I think as photographers to to do this project, this is a whole whole different way of uh, photographing people and ideas and experiences than uh, we had ever really done before. So, um, can't think of anything else to say. <laughs> um, I don't know if anyone has any questions for me or for the models that have spoken today. Any questions? Yes. How, many, um, how many photos did you take to choose your final photo? <clears throat> Um, yeah, I mean, so kind of speaking about the process, maybe. Um, let me take it a step back. What we had done with this project is we sent out a call to people to say, who is interested in this project? This is what we're trying to do. Is anyone interested? You know, we weren't sure how people were going to receive this, you know? If they were like, no, I'm perfect. I don't, I don't need any, I don't need anything. Or, yeah, you know, I want to share my story. And what we really found was that yes, people did want to share their story with us. So, the first step in that was getting people that wanted to be part of it. And we had so many people excited about it, which is so awesome. In fact, there's another show planned for April 2015 at Vermont Center for Photography, so check that out for new you know, additional photos. Um, so once people were excited about it, I had phone interviews or face-to-face -face meetings with people, and I said, okay, let's talk about what you'd like to show for your perfect imperfection. Tell me about what it is. And um, it usually involved also sharing, you know, letting myself be vulnerable to say, you know, I know this can be hard, like, let me tell you about me, you know? So I put myself out there, and then I think I help people also put themselves out there. So we had a meeting to talk about what, what we were going to shoot, which leads me to the next thing. We have maybe three ideas. We shoot for three different ideas. I pick the best out of those three ideas, let's say. Maybe the best five or so from each one. And I would send, I would send um, final images to the models, and I would say these are the images that these are your best shots, like they say on America's Next Top Model. <laughs> <laughs> and um, you know, let me know what you think. You know, or I would say I like you know I like this one, I like this pair one because of this. You know, what do you think? You know. Um, and what was interesting with this photo, this 
photo shoot also is that the models have full control, really, over their final image. For example, if someone said, uh, you know what, I, I, I see the photos, yeah, they're awesome, Liz, but you know what, I don't want to be in that, I, I change my mind. That would have been fine. No one was under any, any obligation to show these. Um, we wanted to be sure that everyone who participated had full control over it. I wasn't going to say, well, stay shy, I took that photo of you, and so be it. You know what I mean? Like, they had to be in complete agreement with it. So, I would say at the end of the day, people probably had about 10 to 15 photos to choose from, maybe, depending on how many ideas we had. Um, and, that's, and that's how we chose those. Long answer to that. No, no question, but a great answer. Taking on the journey with me, too. Folks on Monday are back tomorrow. Yeah, okay. I'll we'll make sure I include that for them, too. Does anyone else have any questions? You have another one? No, please. Because Liz, we've had a conversation about one, you're wanting to make this your profession, but right now it is not, um, I, I don't think you're not a professional photographer. What I meant is that you were talking about wanting to do more of this and less of something else. So I don't know what brought you into, have you been taking pictures your whole life, how do you balance your photography with other parts of your life? You know, a little bit, I'd love to know about the artist. Okay. Okay. Is that okay? Is that That's okay? fine. That's fine. Um, so, yeah, I've been doing photography full time for four years. Before that, it was part time. Um, yes, I would love for this project, with Perfect Imperfection, to be my life's work because I really feel like it is making a difference for people. Um, this show is resonating with people. People at the opening were coming up to me saying, oh my god, I just had to sit down because this was so powerful and wow, this is good work you're doing. And we have gotten so many great comments about the show and people like, I, I could see myself in so many of these, you know, situations and now it's helping me to, you know, people would say to me, it's helping, it was helping them to think about things differently and think about gee, someone's really carrying around this thing and maybe it wouldn't be so bad to be kind to them today. I don't know what baggage or whatever it is you want to call it they have, but does it really hurt to be kind to somebody? You don't know what's going on with them. Um, so, and so how do I, so, I kind of got a bunch of there. So how do I balance it? How do I balance the project-based work um, with Paying gigs. <laughs> well, it's hard. <laughs> it's hard. We actually we applied for a couple of grants, and we did get a couple of grants uh, for the project, so that helped out a little bit. Um, you know, I just I don't see how I could not do this. You know, um, and my passion for it is really what makes me want to go forward with it. And, you know, I shoot weddings, and I do portrait work, and I do events and things like that. And that's fun, too. But where, you know, passion is really, I've discovered, like, I didn't start out wanting to be a portrait photographer. And a lot of my photos are, are really portraits uh, that are in this, in this project. But it's not really even like that. It's like, it's a story. It's telling a story, a very, you know, impactful story to people. I'm make a change. That's, that's where it is. Thank you very much. You're welcome. You're welcome. I do want to talk just about one of the photos. Is um, it's some people didn't want to show who they were, and that's just totally fine. Everyone had that option, you know. So there's one photo where someone's holding a suitcase. It's a blue suitcase, and it's about abandonment. And so in that particular photo, it was a challenge of okay, how do we have the how do we shoot that one? You know, how are we going to shoot that one? The suitcase kind of becomes almost the, the symbol or the person or the focus in that particular one. Um, so even though that's not technically a portrait, it's still it's still a subject of the story. So it's just kind of interesting for, them, for that particular one. Mm -hmm. Does that answer your question? Oh yeah, that's great. Great. Okay, thank you. Yes, I was just hoping that um, you're going to have more because it's yes. so just, 
I get to the end of that and I want three more rooms. <laughs> <laughs> and, so, and as just an audience group, it's fascinating to me to look because you, you, I couldn't tell the imperfections at all as mm -hmm. I looked at, you know, it's like you see the photo and, and then you read the story. And a lot of times you had to read the story to really understand what that person was. Right. Feeling was imperfect. Right, thank you. Yeah, I mean, that is, that's interesting about it. Someone said to me, they said, well, there's a couple. They said, I, I saw the photos first, and then I looked at the description. Then I got it. And then the other person said, well, I read it first, and then I looked at the photos. And so it's, it's different. People all have a different experience with it, too. Um, but yes, we will have more photos um, for the April show. And if anyone knows anyone who is like, I miss that first time around. If you're interested, let me know, because we're going to put out another call pretty soon. We have to start shooting, because I've chosen April. So I'm, not, I'm pretty sure we're going to include all of these, too, because not everyone has had a chance to see. Like, not all of Brattleboro has seen it yet. <laughs> <laughs> so so I, I want to include these, of course, but I'm going, we're going to include probably at least, I'm hoping for 10 to 20 more. And I, I do have some people that miss the first time that I already have a list, so definitely have people contact me. I have a sign-up sheet if people want some more information to me, if you're interested, then, then definitely let me know. Yes. Anyone else? Nothing else. <laughs> Jen, Stacia, any last comments or anything? No? Well, I appreciate everyone coming out and taking the time to listen a little more about the stories behind Perfect Imperfection. I mean, it's been an amazing project, a great, great experience for me. It's a great experience also, you know, in the fact of seeing people kind of transform in a way, you know. At the beginning of the photo shoot, people are like, well, what about, you know, I look all right, what if I do this, you know. And then at the end it's like, wow, okay, we're going to do another shoot, you know. That really feels great to me, you know, and, um, and the fact that people were so willing to share their stories is just almost overwhelming, but in a good way, you know. I, I, guess, I guess what I want to leave with you guys is just, you know, just know that you are good enough and just know that you are lovable. I mean, these are things that I think is kind of behind a lot of this stuff, and so I just wanted to get that message out to you. So, you're perfect to me. Yeah. <laughs>